Good afternoon, Joan. Today is a sunny, a rainy day at St. Andrew High School. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the museum, the St. Andrew High School Museum. I remember when you were at St. Andrew, you were known as Joan Rainford in the Church. I would like you to just tell us about your experience at St. Andrew. How it prepared you for adulthood, how it prepared you for doing all the exciting endeavors that you did since you graduated from St. Andrew. That's a very hard question to answer in a way because one comes to a school with certain formations already in one's head that defines your attitude to the school. So the first thing I really want to say is that I chose to come to St. Andrew High School because it had the reputation of being the best high school for girls in Jamaica. And um, I don't know if you know, but at that time, and I, perhaps in times before that, I'm not clear, um, this was where the Governor General's daughter attended. And um, in those days, that was considered to be a mark of quality because it would be Governor General who was British sent his child to anything but the best. But in addition to that, I had cousins who were from here. And we were not anywhere near the Governor General status, but we managed to, because we came from a family of teachers, and education was very important, to push for getting the best that was available. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say is that my entry, I like to speak about these things from the perspective of what was happening in the way in Jamaican society too, because the school is, reflects what's happening in the society. And um, I came in on, I think, the first batch of free place students to St. Andrew High School. Before that, to attend Andrews, you had to pay. And many of us who were primary school or, you know, students uh, had parents who would find it very difficult to pay the fees to come in. So it was a huge change that year and uh, you know Jamaican society it had all the attendant problems as well as opportunities. There was a huge outcry about the school going down the drain because all of these, excuse my expression, Googleyagas were coming in to go and take, you know, play, to take places in this prestigious institution. So we had our battles from that point of view and the school did reflect a lot of what was happening in society. But what is you know, in terms of racial divisions, class divisions, and so on. But what was important was that it set standards, standards that no matter where you were coming from, you were proud to be a part of. I will never forget that one of the things that I most remarked when I came to Andrews was how clean the bathrooms were. Because if you go to primary school, you know the bathrooms are not a place you necessarily, in those days at any rate, want to be around, right? So just the way that the physical place was kept made you feel that this was something uplifting. Hmm? And then of course, being a girls school, you didn't have all that competition with boys and so on. So it was more about yourself as a person, as a woman, as a girl. A sense of independence, a sense that you can do whatever you want to do and you can achieve and, and that education was important. So it was the standards and it was the organization. Everything was organized. The classes, the houses, the, you, you know, just everything had a sense of organization. And I think that a lot of us who went into organizing later on started learning a lot about it from that, from that point. And then there was the houses and we were encouraged to know who were the persons our houses were named after. So then you got a funny way of getting the, I don't know if you want to call it, the trailblazers, you know, Joan of Arc, yeah, going against the system, managing to beat it, at least that's what I took from it. <laughs> so were you in Joan of Arc house? Yes, I was in our house. So, but everybody has had to know, you had to know about Edith Cavell, you had to know about, you know, all of them had their, their way of, you know, uh, promoting that sense of emulation 
and the sense of outstanding women who had actually achieved. The other outstanding thing for Andrews for me, as I grew older, because it, this is what I really need to remark on because I think it's a, an issue that a lot of children have today. But when we got to fifth form and going to sixth form and so on, we had this wonderful tree on a patio where after school, you could just go out there and lie. And a lot of times we would chat, but it was also a place where if you were having problems at home and you didn't want to go home, you could stay under the tree and do your homework. And I have to tell you that some of the children, the, the, the students, the friends of mine who were there, they weren't going home because they knew they went home. They had to cook, wash, clean, and all of that stuff. And so they were running away from it and wanting to finish their homework before they touched that. So it, 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 to me, it was, it was very, um, I don't know if that was the intention of putting it there, but in actual fact, it served that purpose for, for many of us. But what it reflects is the fact that there was a discipline within the school mm -hmm. and that these students understood the importance of doing their homework mm -hmm. and following the rules and the discipline. And I think this is some of the characteristics that were instilled in, still in the students at St. Andrew High School. Mm -hmm. Because it brings me to a question of what happened at Cornwall College recently, where some persons think that it was very excessive for the students to have all the students of a particular form to be taken to a police station mm -hmm. when a bag was stolen. When it makes a point. Perhaps it could have been handled in another way, rather than having to get the students go to a police station. Mm. Because that would have been unheard of mm. in the days when we were at St. Yes, but the times have changed. That is true. <laughs> but times have changed. Yeah. However, I think that persons need to think of other ways of getting persons to report and not feel that well they are going to be informed. And just last night I was listening to a conversation and the solution was that they could have written on a piece of paper and who they knew had taken the bag and handed it in. No name to anything. Yes, there are other ways. There are other ways. To get back to Andrews though, I would say that um, there was also in the school, in spite of this sense of adhering to rules, um, there was quite a lot of rebellion, especially in that clash that came between the different classes in the school. In fact, when I went into first form, the, school, the form was racially divided. Everybody of a certain color was on one side, and everybody of another color was on the other side. And I was in the middle, and I didn't know where to go. So I chose to go with the primary school children because I was coming from primary school. But that kind of thing kept on recurring as, and until gradually you know it got less and less as you as you went up the school and as the issues were there. But those are not things coming from the school, they're things coming from outside of the society that impacted on the school. And um, I, I think that the way that the rebellion was handled was probably <laughs> helpful. <laughs> Because I think unless it was something to do with stealing or something, there was a kind of, yes, you were punished, but there was a kind of also tolerance to listen to the why. And I won't go into the many incidents because I was a frequent visitor to the headmistress's office um, protesting about certain things having to do with that, that clash of cultures. But it showed that you had a sense of fairness and a sense of justice. And that is very current in today's world mm -hmm. where we find that when persons feel that they have not been shown respect or shown any kind of justice, that they protest and say, we want justice. And yes, but one of the things I've learned is that you, there's, a, there's a way to demand justice, but you must have a call. 